Hi, I'm Dr. R.J. Burr of Reach Rehab and Chiropractic Performance Center. I'm here today with Mr. Matt Schwartz from PCS Global, PCS Counseling. A uh, real quick uh, introduction is Matt is a therapist and professional coach, uh, life and mind, uh, mindset coach. Um, I met Matt uh, a, few year, uh, a few years ago now, I mean, at least a half dozen years ago, and um, Matt's one line, uh, Matt's my therapist, and I'll share that with you, and, um, and my coach, and it's been transformative for me. And the one thing that Matt said that kind of got me interested was what was he said, hey, whether you're in your parents' basement, you're trying to get up, get out of that, or maybe you're out of your parents' basement, but you want to get to the next level in your life, I'm here to help you achieve that. And that was something, I wasn't in the basement, so to say, but I wanted to get to that next level. And that's what um, kind of gravitated me toward Matt. And Matt has a lot of understanding of um, more than just, I think what people would think is just general therapy, but understanding pain, trauma, and how pain can manifest in different ways and what pain really is. Because um, as you're, the audience here, you know I'm a chiropractor, so I deal with pain, musculoskeletal, physical pain, but we feel pain on the outside, but pain can manifest in different ways. Um, so before we jump into my question, Matt, you, can you fill in any gaps of what you want to uh, fill in with our audience about who you are, what you do? Yeah, I mean, so I'm, uh, I'm a therapist in private practice, now mostly online, thanks to COVID. Uh, and I also do a lot of speaking and training. And basically, my goal is to help people understand what pain is, uh, similar to you, how it works, how we can reduce our pain and increase our fulfillment, right? Basically, people come to me. Um, I really already work with um, people who are on some level successful, either in their family, their friends, or their work. And they, again, they really want to get to that next level. And we do that by reducing pain and increasing fulfillment. Awesome. I love it. Now to go to my first question and main question, we all deal with pain and we've talked prior that there's sort of like this triad of pain. There's the mental, emotional, the physical, and the metabolic or internal. Um, and I deal with obviously more on the physical side. You're more on the mental, emotional side. Now I see people that come in with pain and a lot of times I'll see everyone has a different experience of pain. It's their experience, right? We say, oh, it's not in your head, but actually kind of is, right? It comes from the brain, but it doesn't mean you're making it up. Now I'll see people that have what I, in my classification is that, ouch, it hurts when I move or when I do certain thing, it hurts better or worse. That's that type of thing. That's yeah. more of a musculoskeletal on my end. But I'll also see people that will come in to see me hoping that I can help them but they really have a pain that it's, ah, it's always kind of, it's always there and it hurts a little more when I move, but it's not really specific to movement or function. It's just kind of random and it doesn't fit my mold, so to say. I start thinking outside of that, of my part of the triad, thinking more, is this more mental, emotional? Is this more metabolic? Now, can you help us understand of what kind of pain, physical pain, well, one, can people, can people feel physical pain from mental, emotional trauma? And then two, how, I guess, how do you discover that and how do you help people with that? Yeah, absolutely. So the easy answer is yes, uh, <laughs> all the time. And uh, so I'm going to kind of look big picture and then kind of drill in. So big picture, if you're thinking about the, that triad, right, the, uh, the metabolic, musculoskeletal, emotional, right? Even with musculoskeletal and metabolic, right, I'm not, I want to be clear, not all pain is caused by mental and emotional challenges. But if you have a musculoskeletal challenge or a metabolic challenge, there is always going to be a cognitive and emotional component connected to that, right? If you have a diet issue, there's an emotion connected to that. If you have a knee that's hurt for years, there's an emotion connected to that. Is it frustration? Is it sadness? Is it grief? Is it So even if the, the pain is created, by a physical issue, uh, a metabolic issue. Over time, these emotional and cognitive components build up. They can also often block us from actually addressing the issue until those mental and those cognitive components um, are, are settled. For instance, say somebody has a musculoskeletal issue, but for some reason they're having trouble following through on the exercises that they're assigned. The reason is because there's an emotional attachment going on there that's separating us from the behavior that will allow us to solve the problem. So even in the case where there is a musculoskeletal issue, a lot of people will prevent, you know, subconsciously their healing will be prevented by these emotional issues that build up over time. Does that make sense? Yes, it very much does. Yes, we see it all the time. I mean, there's, there's always some sort of uh, emotional attachment to something. And that's where I kind of delve into your side a little bit where we talk about, well, you know, what was the cause of this? What, what happened as a result? What is this? 
what is this taking away from you that you would like to get back? Because it's more about pain. This is about restoring your lifestyle. And it sounds kind of whippy bit to be deep, but it's true. It's about what is this taking away from you when I get back? And then on the other side of that, RJ, the question that I would ask somebody is what is it giving to you? Mm-hmm. Right? So you have this knee issue. What are you getting out of it? Well, actually, now I don't have to put up the Christmas lights. Okay. Mm. Uh, or now I get love for my partner. She wasn't loving before, but now she cares about my injury. Oh, interesting. Right. So are there factors that, that you weren't getting without the injury that are motivating the continuation of that injury? And if so, you're not going to see somebody follow through on their physical rehab program because it, that's painful and getting love for your knee injury is positive. So I'm going to keep doing that. Right. So yeah. it's, it's how do how do emotions maintain pain? What am I getting out of this pain? Right. For a lot of people who can't find joy through joy itself, they'll find joy and happiness and love and connection through pain, thereby necessitating pain continuing in their life. So that's that's like from your side. Right. And yeah. then on my side, when something like, OK, but what about when pain is actually mental or emotional in its origin? Right. And in those cases, what we find is early developmental challenges from childhood or significant painful trauma events in life or perhaps ongoing chronic stressful situations can cause a, um, you know, an emotional upheaval. But most of us are not given the tools in our early life or in childhood to deal with these emotional challenges. And so we're going to fall back on three common um, mechanisms. Right. So the first is going to be repression or escape right? And that's where you'll find a lot of this physical pain manifesting is when like, I'm going to repress that pain and it's going to end up taking up space in my body. And whether it's stored in your brain or in your body or both, right? There are neurons, say I I have my elbow hurts. There are neurons inside your elbow that are causing that pain to continue to exist if it's emotional in origin. So there's both a brain component and a body component. And, and those neural cells store the information that says you're hurting, you're hurting, you're hurting, right? But what's actually happened is they're there because um, it's a clever way to store and protect yourself from pain. We don't do it intentionally. It happens subconsciously. It's a way that our body protects ourselves, right? It's all about our nervous system. So our nervous system is responsible for perceiving pain and understanding where it's coming from, right? So one one methodology that we might deal with is suppression. Another is something called projection, in which I'm blaming my external circumstances or my environment for the pain, right? So say I experience this pain, but I experience it under certain external conditions, perhaps when people treat me a certain way, or when I um, go to a certain place, or when I'm thinking about a certain thing, then my brain begins to tell me that that's the problem. Well, that's not the problem. That's the trigger eliciting the problem, right? It'd be the same for you if somebody, you know, starts walking up a staircase every time and their knee hurts. Well, it's not the staircase that's the problem, right? It's the knee. We're not going to fix the staircase and turn it into an escalator. We need to fix the problem in the knee. It's the same thing. If you keep having these fights with your boss, maybe it's not about your boss. Maybe it's about your dad. Maybe it's about your mom. Maybe it's about, or or the last boss you have, but there's some sort of emotional injury and we're visual creatures, RJ. So it's easy to blame it on our external environment. Um, And then, you know, then we don't have to deal with it. But more importantly, our nervous system can't always tell us, right? So, So projection is the second. And then the third is what we would call like expression. And that may sound like a good thing, right? Like we're taught, oh, I'm supposed to express my emotion or my pain. And yeah, absolutely. To some degree, it's helpful. And and to some degree, suppression is helpful. And to some degree, projection is helpful. But the problem is if I get love for expressing my pain, then I'm going to keep expressing my pain because I'm looking for love, right? So the suppression, projection, expression can all be ways of distancing ourselves from emotional pain. So ultimately, when somebody comes into my office, my job is to help them cut that out, right? Whether I'm escaping into the television or I'm talking to my wife every night about my bum knee or, you know, I'm blaming my boss because every time he you know, yells at me, my knee hurts, right? And my job is to say, hey, like actually what's happening is there's some confusing messages going on in your nervous system 
system that you haven't been taught to understand. I can teach you how to understand these messages in your nervous system. And then we can figure out what the origin of this stuff is. We can delve into that trauma. We can work through it. We can heal it. And then Mm, magically those places in your body don't hurt so much personal for me you know for a while i woke up every morning with this pain in my chest right i had it checked out i had my ekg i did all this stuff right nothing's wrong and as i began to do my specific therapy that i now do called emdr which is a whole rabbit hole we won't get into that pain in my chest began decreasing to the point now where i wake up every morning i don't have that pain in my chest anymore so um I hope that answers your question. And I would just want to give your listeners and your viewers hope, you know, that if, if you've tried solving a problem through a musculoskeletal intervention and it doesn't seem to be clearing up, there's probably an emotional component underneath. And it's worth talking to a therapist or a coach or somebody who can help you kind of inventory what might be going on and, and ultimately heal that pain. 100%. I mean, that's, that's great. I mean, so you said projection, expression, suppression. So if you're having issues with those where, you know, you're seeing me for a knee problem, but yet you're going out there saying, we're done with the stairs, we're getting a ranch, right? Yeah, there, might be, yeah. there might be other issues going on there and you may need to talk to someone. Now, very quick before we go, um, some people, there's still stigma of seeing a therapist. Can you, can you, can you touch on that very quickly? Yeah, I mean, we're we're taught in our culture that we're supposed to solve all of our problems and that, you know, any, you know, emotional need is weakness and I, it's just BS. I mean, it, we are emotional creatures, right? You cannot stop feeling your emotions. You can suppress them all you want, but sooner or later, you're going to feel happy, angry, sad. All a therapist is, is somebody who helps you understand your nervous system, your emotion system, your cognition system, how you think, right? And how you behave. And we look at your thoughts, your emotions, your behaviors, how they sync up and how changes in any one of those can affect the other. So, you know, honestly, I, I, I mean, I see a therapist every week or every other week um, because it's just good to have somebody who's healthy and responsible for your emotional health. Again, I would think of it like you go to the dentist every so often and you also want to learn how to brush your teeth and floss, right? Are you spending more time on keeping your teeth healthy than your brain healthy? I'd like to suggest your brain controls a lot more of your life than your teeth. Uh, I think both are important, right? But um, just unfortunately in our culture, we're not taught how to deal with our emotions in a healthy way. The good news is more and more kids in school are learning having these social emotional curriculum. So hopefully that'll change. And I think RJ, just our generation, like I think therapy is much more normalized. For the millennials, right? Yep. Crazy millennials with their I therapists. I know, right? So that's true. I mean, I think any patients of mine that are watching this are laughing right now because I always tell everyone, you know, you need to brush and floss your joints or your spine. It's so true. We do it in our society through dentistry, but we have not been taught how to do that musculoskeletally with back pain or neck pain, whatever it may be. We have not taught that uh, mental emotionally with, with therapy and, um, uh, and support. And it's something you're right that needs to come around the corner in our society. I believe it's happening, but it's still, there's still that, uh, it's not there yet, but it's getting there. All right. Well, Matt, I know you got to run and want to keep it short for our audience. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's wonderful information. And I, and I know that people got a lot out of this. Thank you very much. Thank you, RJ. Your patients are lucky to have you. You're making a, a positive impact in their lives. And it's a wonderful thing for you to be able to show them that they can heal and they can grow. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it.